First off, I want to say congratulations on your hire here to Frostburg State University as the school's 13th football coach. Everything seems to be happening so quickly from your interview uh, to being selected as, as FSU's coach uh, to physically getting on campus, hitting the ground running. How is everything kind of progressing? What are your thoughts so far to the start of your, your tenure here at Frostburg? Well, you, you, you just said, you know, everything's happening really fast, and it is. Things are happening fast. You know, I, I was announced, I, I was offered a contract last week and was happy to sign it. I, I'm ecstatic to be here. Um, want to hit the ground running and get started. I got into town early Monday morning and actually began my job here Monday morning. Um, so it was a hectic day getting everything done paperwork wise and getting settled in, getting recruiting started and getting to know some of the players. I was in, introduced to the entire team on Monday night and, and that was exciting for me and I think it was exciting for the guys because new things are happening here and there'll be some changes here and going to be some improvements here in the next couple of months. Um, but, but to answer your question, I'm excited to be here and th things have been really, really hectic the last couple of days. Now, kind of sticking with that thought, what made you want to become Frostburg's next football coach? But I, I went to junior college 20 minutes from here, so, so I got to see the campus, you know, in the mid-90s and, and thought it was a great place and a place with great potential. Um, in 19, in, excuse me, in, 19, in 2007 and 2008, it, you know, we played Frostburg State in football, so we got to be here in 2007, and I got to see campus that day. I got to see the athletic facilities and got to see some of the players that Frostburg had, you know, five or six years ago, and I was really, really intrigued by the potential that this university has and that the town of Frostburg had and that the football program and athletic department had. And I think this is a great town and a great university already. But I thought that day that we, with things done correctly and with the players buying in and everybody within this football program learning to finish what they start and finish everything we do, I thought it could be a great place to coach college football. Talk a little bit about your immediate or short-term goals for the football program? Uh, my my short-term goals are almost all off the field. It, it's to improve the team GPA, to improve the discipline and accountability with the, within our team, to improve the competitive spirit within our guys and within our coaching staff. And, and then last but not least, within the entire football program, we're going to improve the way we finish things. You know, we're, we're going to finish our classes and we're going to finish plays and we're going to finish study hall and we're going to finish our weightlifting sessions. We're going to finish everything. And when we learn to finish, it'll translate over into games down the road and we'll learn to finish games. Um, you know, if, if short term goals, you, you know, if it if it includes spring ball and into the fall, our spring goals are this, you know, learn to play football with discipline. Learn to be competitive every single time you step between the lines on the football field and learn to finish finish the play you're on finish the quarter you're, on, you're in, finish the half you're in, finish the game you're playing. And then our fall, my fall goal, my goal for the fall is that we are immediately competitive. You know, that the, there, there's no 40 to three games and there's no 70 to four, 14 games that we're immediately competitive week in and week out. My, my immediate goal for this fall is that we're competitive week in and week out. And if we're competitive, if we're competitive and we have discipline and we have a competitive nature about us and we learn to finish, we'll win our fair share of games. But, but the thing I don't want to happen early is, is I don't want us to be undisciplined and I don't want us to be turning the football over and I don't want us to be doing things that, that cost football teams games, unnecessary penalties, unnecessary turnovers, and us not finishing things. You talk, you talk about your immediate or short-term goals. What about, what about your long-term goals? What do you see long-term for the program? Sure. Three, three years from now, five years from now, seven years from now. You know, my, my plan, you know, the, the politically correct thing to say that everybody wants to hear is I'm going to return this thing to where I'm going to return this football program to where it was in the late 80s all through the 90s and early 2000s. You know, return it to being one of the best NCAA Division three football teams on the East Coast. Re return it to being an NCAA football team that people around the country recognize as being, hey, they're pretty good. You know, hey, you, you've got to play your best football the Saturday that you play Frostburg. But now my, my, my personal goal is three, five, seven years from now, I want to compete for a conference title year in and year out. I want to make the national playoffs. And if we're competing for conference titles year in and year out and we're making the national playoffs, when we get to the playoffs, let's take it week by week and let's win four or five games. Yeah, and it, I'm, I'm, I'm a Mike, Mike Leach fan. I'm Mike Leach disciple. I like some of his philosophies in football. They asked him his first press conference at Washington State, hey, what are your goals for the Washington State program? 
and he leaned back and he smiled at him. He said, you know, hey, let's win a game a week. Well, my, my, my immediate goal for this fall and my goal three years from now, five years from now, seven years from now, let's win a game a week. Let's just win one game each week and it'll be okay. Now, spring practice, what, a month away, a couple of weeks? Sure. What are your thoughts with, uh, again, we kind of talked about it a few minutes ago. What are your thoughts now that everything's kind of happening really quick? Spring practice is going to be exciting. It'll be exciting for our staff. Um, we're keeping some guys from, from the last staff, going to bring in some new guys as soon as we get through the hiring process. Spring will be exciting for our coaching staff. It's going to be exciting for our players. It's always exciting for players because it's new. It, it, these young guys, they like things that are new. So and it's going to be new to them. Our offensive system will be new. Our defensive system will be new. Our special team system will be new. Our way of running practice, and we have an exciting up-tempo way that we run practice. We'll get onto the field and get off of the field in an hour and 45 minutes. We're going to run to and from drills. Our coaches are going to beat the players from drill to drill, position to position on the field. And if our coaches are running, you better believe the players are going to be running to catch them. Um, but we'll run from drill to drill, and it'll be exciting. And we'll be implementing. We'll be implementing what I've talked about this entire interview. We'll be implementing discipline, we, you know, not turning the football over, not committing silly penalties, learning to tackle fundamentally. You know, so, so you're not giving up 40, 50, 70 points a game, doing those things. That competitive spirit, we're going to compete. Every single spring practice, there'll be a competitive drill, um, whether it be a relay race or whether it be one-on-one -on -one competitions with the wide receivers and, and, and the DBs and the quarterbacks. You know, we're going to compete every single day. And then the last thing is they're going to be taught this spring to finish, finish everything they start. I, I wish we were starting spring ball today. I'm excited. Now, you touched a minute ago on your offense and defensive schemes being new. Talk a little bit about what you're going to implement here uh, as the Bobcat head coach. Uh, offensively, and it'll be the same way at Frostburg as it's been everywhere I was an assistant and then me being the head coach at Southern Virginia University the last five seasons. We will adjust our offense to our talent. So, we, it, you know, it, it, last year at Southern Virginia, you know, our talent was up front. We were really good on the offensive line. We lined up and ran the ball four out of every five plays. You know, our quarterback managed games. We had one or two good receivers that made plays for us, but we managed games and we lined up and ran the football. The same will be true here. If, if our strength is in running the football, we're going to line up and run the football. If our strength, if we can pitch it and catch it, as well as anybody else in the conference, anybody else in the country, we're going to throw the ball around the yard. You know, we'll pitch it and catch it. And I don't mind throwing it 70 times a game. And a couple of years ago at Southern Virginia, we did. We threw it 50, 45, 50 times a game. So we've done that in the past, and, and we'll do those things. Um, the hope is this, that we can do both, that we can run it and throw it and we can be balanced. Every coach talks about being balanced. So it, it, when you're balanced, it keeps defenses on their heels, keeps them off guard, and you can do those things. We'd like to be balanced. Now, in my heart of hearts, I'm a power run guy. You know, I, I, watch, I watch Stanford play on TV, and I watch Wisconsin play on TV, and I watch Alabama, and, and I saw North Dakota State. Big, I'm a big, big fan of North Dakota State. You know, I watch them line up and run power 30, 35 times a game. I start salivating. I, I, I'm a power football guy. I heard, you know, the, the football life on ESPN, on, on NFL Network with Marty Schottenheimer. He said, Marty Schottenheimer said when he died, he wanted the word power put on his tombstone. Well, I'd be okay with that too. I'm, I'm a power run guy by heart, but we'll do whatever we're best at on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, we're going to change. The, in, the, in the past year, they've been a 50 front. They've been a three-man odd front. We're going to move to a four-man front. You know, we'll, we'll be a base 4-3 cover 2 defense. And we'll be multiple out of that, but we'll be base 4-3 cover 2. Um, hey, at home games, home games, we're going to start blitzing the opposing team as soon as they get off the bus. In, in away games, we'll start blitzing them as soon as we get off the bus. But we're going to be an attacking style of defense, and we'll move the fronts and do some different things. But we'll be a base 4-3 cover two. Uh, special teams-wise, you know, we're going to be multiple on special teams. I know it's a cliche these days. Everybody says multiple, multiple, multiple. It keeps you from explaining anything. And, and we'll be multiple, but we're going to attack on special teams. Uh, not a lot of people know this. There's 730 college football teams in the country stretching from the East Coast all the way out to Hawaii, 730 of us. The last two years, Southern Virginia University's led the country in block kicks. In 2012, we blocked 12 kicks in 11 games. Last year, we blocked six kicks in 10 games. And it's, it, we're not just blocking kicks when it doesn't matter. You know, we blocked, we blocked kicks in 2012 and in 2013 that won football games for us. We're going to block kicks here. We're going to be an exciting brand of special teams. We're going to fake field goals. We're going to fake punts. 
you know, we're going to onside kick kickoffs. We're going to pooch kick kickoffs. We're going to directional punt and kick. Um, we'll do different things and be exciting. We're going to win games on special teams. Special teams is one-third of the football game, and we're going to win that third.